Larry Walsh, to be fair, the last words to prevent increases, I would hope mean prevent s extreme increases. The likelihood is that in future there will have to be additional increases. Everybody knows their utilities go up, the gas prices have gone up, we pump sewage, we pump fresh water, that takes electricity. We collect trash, that takes diesel. We have all the equipment that is supporting all of our facilities, that takes gasoline. It's unavoidable and we can't do like the federal government and say, well, there has been no cost of living like they've done to Social Security for two years. The fact is, we may look at future increases. We certainly would hope, or I would anyway, not to ever have to do an increase like this again. We should never have gone six years without at least minimal increases. We can't go back and change that. We had to adapt to what was necessary at the time. Remain solvent, continue to provide services. I was quoted in the Grizzly as saying, we couldn't provide any service if we were bankrupt. I still believe that. Karen Oxandabor, I agree that the last increase was very high. It was hard for me, and I'm sure it's hard for everyone. But I think the mistake that was made is that increases weren't approved when they should have been. There was many years that went by where they weren't increased. I think uh, the better plan would be small increases planned out for the next 10 years or whatever, and of course based on exactly what the, uh, the costs will be. Bob Ybarra. As I stated back in September at the CSD Employees Association Candidate Forum, uh, I was appalled by, by, the, by the need for a 28 percent increase all at once. This reminded me of what Barwa had been doing, uh, going four or five years without an increase and then hitting it with a 15, 18 percent. Um, I am a firm believer, um, and I don't like taxes or increases any more than anybody else, but I am a believer that yearly you should, whatever the increase is to our services, um, I believe in passing that on on a small scale as opposed to waiting six years and then hitting right between the eyes, just destroying those that are on fixed incomes and those that are having hard times just making it right now. Can you imagine if we were just getting a small increase as opposed to the large one that we got? We have, and like Larry said, you can't do anything about the past decisions made by the past boards, but I feel strongly about passing along the, the index or cost of living uh, increases as needed not necessarily going to be an every day, every year thing, but you have to pass them along instead of depleting your reserves like we've done for the last couple of years. So that's, one of the, that's my stance on that. Just make sure that you're passing along as we get the increase to our services. Thank you. Joseph Kelly. Uh, long before I uh, moved to uh, Big Bear, uh, I own property up here, so I've been a, a customer of CSD for a long time. And uh, probably most of us know uh, the tax uh, bills are in the mail. We're getting those tax bills now. Just today, I was looking and uh, seeing a CSD several times in my uh, tax bills. Uh, we're all concerned about that. But as it was mentioned before, CSD provides definite services that have definite costs. And these costs are beyond the control of uh, anybody in this valley. It's uh, their economic changes uh, affecting the whole country and even the world. Uh, energy costs, uh, it's, uh, we don't control that. What we can do, as was mentioned before, uh, make these uh, increases uh, gradually, look forward to uh, what we face, and uh, I think that's where a bit of Im imagination uh, from me, for on my part, may come in. I think uh, if we can look uh, over the horizon, we may find some answers. Something that the school district is doing is uh, working with a company that is providing uh, solar energy, uh, electricity at a much reduced cost, uh, a system that will be installed in the school district uh, properties, and uh, it will save hundreds of thousands of dollars to the school district, and I think we could look at that 
with CSD uh, on perhaps a smaller scale, but imagination like that can help us. Well, unfortunately, we had the wrong board there for a number of years, and they just did not want to raise. And the folks here are absolutely right. We need to raise a little bit each year so it's not so hard on the consumer. But I was with, with a large uh, contractor here this afternoon, and just, a few, uh, just to fill one of his diesels with fuel, which is a large dump truck, it cost him almost $1,000. It's absolutely unbelievable. So when you start looking at the cost, like the other folks have mentioned here at the counter, uh, these costs is all based on fuel, and there's not too much you can do about it but to bite the bullet and keep going. But at the same time, I think the agency has to continue to look into different ways of saving money to offset some of these costs for the, the time being. Thank you. Paul Terry, um, I don't like to relive history here, but I think I'll take a moment. Uh, you have to also realize that when we came on the board, those of us, uh, we were actually faced with about $4 million in prior ob obligations or purchases, which represented about 35% of our reserves. And uh, so basically there was a problem there, and we also had three departments that were bleeding red ink. And you have to do something before you can stabilize uh, the operation. And yes, we had gone years without an increase. But one point I wanna make, and I made it earlier, it's important for a board to also look at what's going on now, but also look into the future when it makes decisions. Because again, when you make a decision, sometimes the penalty will come back months or years later. And I think this is one of the things that a board needs to get around and really do is to analyze their decisions for the future as well as the present. Thank you. an expert on that as a board member I would trust those that were to investigate all the possibilities all the th changes that we could make things we could do as a district in all the departments that um, would make the, our the air, air cleaner and protect the environment and I would do my homework to uh, make the right decisions in that regard Bob Ybarra. I also am not an expert in this, except for I do know that we have a lot of wind in this valley. And there's a couple of uh, mills down at the other end of the valley in the east side. And I would think that we not necessarily want to look like Palm Springs out there, but we do need to have some kind of, of, of uh, uh, solar power, wind power going here. Um, and I'm gonna, my boss is gonna owe me here, but you know one of the great things about uh, energy is insulated windows. So you need to get rid of those single pane windows and get your dual glaze in there. Um, but other than that, no, you really do need to work with agencies and conserve, you know, you know, we have to question some of the things that we're doing as far as fuel cons consumption within the CSD. Are we doing, uh, are we going in areas more than what we really should? Are we doing multiple uh, runs Say with, say with the trash pickup and things, while we're hitting the same areas twice. Things that we can, can really look at reducing costs for energy to keep in, uh, keeping the fuel fumes from uh, going up in the air here. But other than that, we have to just explore, just like Karen was talking about. We have to explore other avenues and, and really get guys that are on the, on the board that are really knowledgeable in that area to bring uh, professionals in to talk with us and what they recommend for our district where we can uh, go a little greener. Thank you. Joseph Kelly, uh, I mentioned uh, a bit of solar in the last uh, question, I ran out of time. Uh, what the school district is doing and the company that is offering to 
uh, install solar energy uh, in school district properties. They do this without an investment by the uh, school district. The company that does it provides all of the uh, uh, installation. They maintain ownership of the installation and they simply sell the electricity at about a third of what we're paying now uh, to the school district. So that's a great savings to the school district. Uh, we can do that with CSD. Uh, some of my scientific background, I will tell you uh, something I've uh, mentioned about the MWD and the lake. Uh, algae is growing in the lake. Uh, we can look at that as a uh, uh, product. Algae can be harvested and turned into biodiesel. We also have uh, sewage uh, in Barwa with, uh, uh, that's, that's food for algae. Uh, we could look into a, uh, uh, an algae uh, growing plant uh, and harvesting plant to make biodiesel uh, in addition to solar. That's something that we should look at the feasibility of. And uh, uh, public uh, knowledge, uh, a campaign of uh, helping the public understand what we're doing, uh, we can get uh, everybody behind us. It'll work. Well, being an old timer, and I don't mean to upset my neighbor to my right, but if it works, don't fix it. I would like to see more uh, work done in those areas where you could prove to me that there could be money saved. The biggest thing that I know where, particularly in our district, you know, we could bring in a efficiency expert for some of our different departments. Um, our guys do a great job, but uh, the fuel is, is, is a big item, a great big item. And uh, in my opinion, and I uh, never confirmed this, but our school district had a great idea. And somewhere between Washington and Sacramento and Big Bear Lake, they told them they had to take a couple of these engines and switch them over to natural gas. It was a pretty good idea. And I think two of those buses are on it. I haven't confirmed it. They brought in equipment and showed how it was, and the pressure had to be uh, increased. But today, those two buses, they have to go all the way to the rim of the world to get their natural gas injection. So, you know, some of these things are great, but then sometimes I'm not too sure, like I said, if it works, don't fix it. Try to cut the cost of the item that you do have in the barrel. Paul Terry, um, one of the things, I'm on the borrow board too, and one of the things I learned out there is because of the cost of electric, borrow is actually instituted ways of using a power in-house in order to offset the power that's used from the electric company during the peak hours. So I do think there there is uh, opportunity for looking into saving money as well as saving uh, electric and also, if you will, going green. As far as what we can do, I think, and we're gonna need to do these things anyway, frankly. Um, again, I'm kind of into my closing statement, but when you're looking at a budget, for instance, you need to look at the line items and you can look at them for different reasons. Uh, yes, we need to save cost. And as my gentleman over here suggested, if we can reduce the number of trips that we make in our trash trucks or in our trucks, uh, it, it'll make a difference in not only the gas, but also the pollution in the atmosphere. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things out there we can do on a small scale. On a larger scale, we may need to have at some point a consultant come in and look at our operation and see where some of the major changes can be made. Thank you. Larry Walsh. I live in a passive solar house. I designed it to handle solar panels, yet when I had several contractors come up, the estimates they gave me, the proposal was such that it would take 30 years to recover the cost, and the panels were only guaranteed for 25. So sometimes the system just isn't up to speed yet. We have facilities that could probably handle solar panels, but we'd have to look at whether we can use it, what we'd have to do to store it. Uh, I also worked at one point for the MWD at the boat uh, landing on North Shore, we decided it was so windy we must be able to put in a wind generator. When we actually put in the instrumentation to, to measure the wind direction and the speed, we found it was only half 
the time it was really blowing, and only half of that was adequate to generate. So again, we found out it simply didn't factor out. I walk most of the time. This is one of my splurges was to drive all the way to this end of the valley. I've seen in the paper where they were talking about people who bike to work. I think that's asking a lot of our employees to walk from facility to facility. Sometimes things just won't work, but we can always see what we can do to cut back and to be as green as possible. Bob Ybarra. If we're better than we were two years ago, I believe we are starting on that path, as mentioned already with uh, some of the, um, the increase that we had to do to stop the bleeding. Uh, I think we're in the right way. I, I think we have the right people in place on the board, uh, financially anyway, to uh, continue this, this uh, path of, of uh, better, being better um, uh, able to to uh, meet our obligations and not dip into the, the piggy bank anymore. Um, one of the things I think that, that's important is to continue um, what we're doing now. And right now, the fact is that uh, we can't do anything about the past and we are going forward and that's exactly what we have to do. It's very simple. You know, you have to cut, you have to cut the costs but at the same time, you cannot decrease the service to our community. That's something that they count on and we have to do it. So we have to work smarter and we have to have people involved. We have to have the CSD employees involved. They're the ones that are out there and they can come back to, to the board. They can come back to their supervisors, uh, to the general manager with ideas of how to cut the costs so that we'll be better off. Maybe they can get that raise down the road. And uh, that, that would be the best thing that could happen is to reward these hardworking CSD employees uh, for taking it on the chin for a couple of years. Thank you. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes. What do you feel is the state of the CSD? Are we better than we did two years ago? Please give specific examples. Joseph Kelly. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's good we're, we're still here. Uh, we haven't uh, we haven't collapsed. There are other uh, municipalities in the state and around the country that have collapsed and uh, gone into receivership, and things have gone very badly. Uh, I think we're doing okay. Uh, I'd like to kind of return to uh, uh, some of the uh, things that were mentioned about uh, going green. The uh, technology for the solar that the uh, school district is doing is uh, available now. It's not experimental and it's installed and maintained at uh, no cost to the district. Uh, it's simply on the grid and there's no storage system. Uh, ideas about uh, harvesting algae and making biofuel, biodiesel. Uh, if our uh, trash trucks run on diesel and we make biodiesel, uh, I think w that helps. There are several or at least a few uh, people here in the valley that are making biodiesel uh, right now. Uh, you can probably uh, notice their trucks driving around. They smell like donuts behind the, uh, the truck because they're using grease from uh, our donut shops and they're making diesel out of it. Another thing you can make with uh, uh, sewage is uh, methane, a methane digester, and you can use that for uh, producing electricity. Are we better off? You bet. When I look in the last two years and what this present <clears throat> board has accomplished, they have settled lawsuits. Our legal costs now will be finally going down. We're operating a lot more efficient than what we did. Uh, to answer your, the question that was put toward me, you bet. We are one hell of a lot better off. <clears throat> 